this is MJ and in today's video I'm now going to be showing you how to seam up the cardigan. So I've taken the cardigan off the blocking mat. It's nice and flat and it's looking amazing. So this is my back panel and I have it with the right side facing me. So if you've added a stitch marker, that's great. I can tell just by looking at my edge here, this edge here, that this is my right side. Okay, so now what I've done is I've taken my front panel and I've also found the right side and I face the right side to the right side of the back panel. And now what you wanna do is line up your stitch pattern so I've used my stitch markers to pin it sort of as I go. You wanna make sure that your shells are all lining up with the stitch pattern. And if you've done a good job with your blocking, it should match up really well. And just keep coming all the way over, making sure the stitch pattern lines right up. And that's how you know for sure it's all gonna be even. And that's what we're gonna do for the entire piece. So when we seam down our sleeves and our side, we're gonna make sure, again, that the stitch pattern matches up when we're seaming it. And that's gonna make sure that it looks really nice and professional when you seam up this piece. If you just randomly do it, it's not gonna look good and your pattern's not gonna match up. So make sure you take the time to pin it out and be sure that everything is lining up perfectly. So I left a long tail on my piece. So what I'm gonna do is use that tail to seam the top sleeve and the shoulder together. So I'm just gonna angle my camera in a little bit closer for you as I do this. Okay. So I'm grabbing the stitch on the other side And I'm gonna actually put that through and not that first one. And then I'll just go through the next stitch and then I'll just remove that stitch marker out of my way. And as you go, you're just making sure that the pattern is lining up. So here's our chain so we'll go through the chain. You just gotta take your time to do this, making sure it's so worth taking your time when you have a really nicely seamed piece. Okay, so now we're to that V so again, we're just making sure that when we seam that, we're seaming it so the stitch pattern is matching up. So now I'm going through the chain of the V. And then I'm gonna get those double crochets, seaming them together. And we're gonna just do this all the way along until we get to the center part. So I'm just gonna complete seaming this off camera and then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so I'm just coming to the end. So I'll remove that final marker And I will not, and I had enough yarn, just enough to finish this off. I'm just making sure this corner is not gonna look weird. And then what you can do is weave your yarn back 
through, just hiding it. And then what you want to do is weave that back in the opposite direction. Just hiding it. And going back in the opposite direction is what's going to secure that tail. Okay, so then you can just trim. And I want to show you how it should look. You should have a really nice join where your shells are all matching up. All the stitch pattern matches up as you go. It looks great. And a nice steam would just really help flatten that out and make it look really great. Okay, so now I have moved down to the bottom of the cardigan. So I don't want to seam all the way down. I'm going to leave some of it. I'm going to leave some of it open. So how about let's measure here. I think six inches would be great. And that takes it brings us to this shell here. And that's an easy seam. So what I'm going to do is the same idea as I want to get all of this marked before I start. So I know I'm going to start there and then I'm going to move up my piece. Now you could start also at the sleeve, but with this opening that I wanted to do at the bottom, I thought I would start at the bottom. And again, if you've done a good job on your blocking and measuring, everything should be lining up perfectly. And that's why it's important to measure and be very accurate with that blocking job. Especially with lace. As you see, we're just gonna kinda work all the way up to our sleeve as we go here. And I'm just gonna keep going and getting it all pinned this tail can get weaved, so I'm gonna stop and do that. Okay, so I finished that up. I finished pinning out all the way to the sleeve. And I'm gonna start down at the bottom and I'm go going to pull off a really long tail. I don't wanna run out, so I'm gonna get a long piece Okay, so I know I'm starting this one at my marked stitch here, and I'm gonna take it out just so I can get in here good. So I'm gonna go on this side and this side, pull this all the way with leaving a tail for weaving, and I always like to give a knot for this first. that first one just to make sure it's secure Then I just will pull my tail so that it it's kind of at the halfway and just like we did the sleeve and the shoulder seam we're just matching up our pattern as we go so again you just need to take your time 
making sure that you're seaming it correctly. Going through the chain. I'm just removing these as you go. So I'm going to continue working away on this off camera. I'm just going to work all the way up and right out to the sleeve just and hopefully I have enough tail but if not if you run out just weave in and add and maybe even go from your sleeve down at least if you could get to this area would be a nice place to stop and then another piece for the sleeve section but if you can make it all the way that's great okay so I finished all my seaming and I just have a hand steamer here and I'm just steaming my seams and I love doing this because it just kind of helps flatten them out. As you can see how bunchy it kind of looks. As you steam it, it's gonna help to flatten that seam out. And I really suggest, if you don't have a steamer, investing in one if you plan on doing garments. I honestly don't, couldn't live without mine it just really helps to finish everything off I use it for my clothes all the time too it's amazing for fringe especially if your yarn is all kind of twisty and stuff. The steamer just really helps to flatten everything. So now what we're gonna do is the exact same thing on the other side. So you wanna start up at the shoulder. You wanna find the right side of your piece match up again the right sides so I'll have to pin all of this out as well and we'll be coming in here. All of our sizes have the same neck opening, which is basically one repeat, the width of one repeat. So we have a little bit here, which will make it hang nice, go around your neck nicely. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin this one out as well, seam the sleeve and the shoulder, and then I will do the sides, and I'll give that a steam as well. Okay, so I have it all seamed up and put together, and what I'll probably do as a final step is hang it up and give it a good steam. Just, I've steamed the edges, but I like to give it an overall steam as well when it's hanging, just to make sure that it looks good. And I haven't wrinkled it as I've been working with it. So now that I have it all seamed together, I wanna work on the edging. You don't have to do this step, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I'm joining on, so this is my front right side. I'm joining down here and I wanna join right into this 
bottom section right here. It can be difficult doing the edging when we're going across something like this because we're wanting to make sure that we're doing even stitches. So we'll start out single crocheting right there and then here and then here where it's easy to kind of see that you just need to put one stitch in spaces. So here is like one space here would be one space and here would be one space. But now we get to this big chain section and I have already kind of gone over to see how it will look. So four single crochet in this space looks good. So one, two, three, four. And then in the next space, two is good. So one, two. And in that next larger space, two is good as well. And then we're getting back to these spaces here that one is good. So one in that space, one in that space, and one in this space. Now I just want you to go back and look at your work and you're gonna wanna like just sort of push out those stitches where you had four in there just so they're evenly. And the idea is that you want this to be nice and even. You don't want it bunching the work at all. So make sure that's coming along. But if you're using the hook that you worked throughout, so I've got my 4.5, if you switched your hook, then use that size. Sometimes it's better to even go on the smaller size of a hook if you're struggling to get this looking good. So we're to this big chain again, so we want four. One, two, three, four. And as you work, you just pull that, that can get pulled out along there. And then the next big space is two. And then the next chain space is two. And then we're two, where we do one, in the next space, one in the next space, and one in the next space. So basically it's just repeating and as you can see again where we put the four we want to just push that out so that it's even. It's hard to get them to go evenly when you're working in that big space. So just going back and pulling it is all you need to do. So this is what we're doing. We're repeating again. So four, one, two, three, four, two in the next, two in the next, one in the next, one in the next, and one in the next. And then just go back and kind of even it out. that's coming I think that's coming along pretty good if you find too many you could always switch down and do only three instead of four stitches but I think for mine I think that's looking pretty good so you just need to kind of play around if you need to with your own work I'm not going to give you an exact stitch count because you may need to play with it to get it to look right. So I'm gonna keep working that along in that pattern that I showed you. And I'm gonna just continue working it all the way to the other side as well, working all the way down to this edge. So I'm working down this side and I just wanted to give you a little peek as to how this one's looking. So here, I'm doing four, one, two, three, four, and then one, 
two, three. And then in this space here, we're doing two, And then the next one we're doing two. And then in the next one we're doing the four. And then we're doing one in each of the next three spaces. And then the two. and two. And I'm just repeating that all the way down and you can go back. And I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. Okay, so I'm just finishing off and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to my four millimeter crochet hook. I just think it's going to make the edge just that much kind of tighter. Like it looks pretty good, but I think dropping it down to this hook size is gonna make it look even better. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work all the way back around and then I'm gonna come back again one more time because I wanna end on my right side because this is the nice edge. So we're going back, working on the wrong side and then coming back one more time. So in total, we have three rows of single crochet across the edge. Okay, so I'm coming to the other side and I'm just taking a look at how it's all looking and hanging just to make sure that I am happy with how it's looking. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is I made sure that I had the same number of stitches on each side, even though you should if you follow that pattern that I was showing you. I counted mine to make sure and I had 116 on this side and I had 116 stitches on this side and I had 10 across my neck opening at the top. So if yours is a little bit different, that's fine. Just make sure that you do have them even on each side to make sure that your cardigan will hang correctly. So now we're going back chain one and turn to finish off that we're ending on the right side. So we have a really nice finished edge. So this is my third row. What I will also do is go along the bottom with one final row as well. And I'll do that once I finish this. But I'm really liking how this is finishing it off with the bit smaller hook. It's going perfectly. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the edging of our sleeve. So we're going to be doing it just like our other edging. I have already done one. And this is how it looks. So again, we're going to start with our larger hook. Okay, so I'm starting into my 10th ball for this section. So we're going to join and we'll work a single crochet right in that first space. And a single crochet in the next. And this is going to go simil very similar to the edging. We've got the big chain space here and we're going to work four, one, two, three, four, and then we have these spaces where we're working two. So two in the next, and then two in the next, and then we're working one, one, and one. And then we're back to working four. So it's just like the side. So depending on the size you're working on, how many stitches around is going to vary. 
you're working on are extra small or the bigger sizes. But just follow this sort of pattern so that you get a nice even line. So two, and it just repeats. Two, and then one in each of the next three spaces. So I'm just gonna continue working this all the way around. And the important thing is with the sleeves, again, is that you just have an equal number of stitches on each sleeve. You don't want one different than the other. Okay, and so once you get all the way around, slip stitch to join, and now I've chained, changed to the smaller hook, and we're just gonna work single crochet stitches all the way around, and you wanna do not going in there, right? You wanna do two rounds with your smaller hook so that we have three in total. So I'm just gonna complete my two rounds off camera and then I'll meet you back up. Okay, so I've worked around my second round and I have 69 stitches and I've made sure that I also had 69 on the other sleeve as well. So if you're a little different than mine, that's okay. And depending on the size, you're gonna have different stitches as well. You just wanna make sure that each sleeve is equal and that it's looking not too pulled in and not too bunchy. That's the important thing for the sleeve. So I'm just gonna finish off with my final round and then I'll fasten off and weave in my ends. 